plants. Now this is the magic of the plant kingdom. Okay, once we grow carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and oils, now we get into where all the cool stuff comes from. Is our carbohydrates are just sunlight, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, a few minerals. We get photosynthesis. Our proteins are our nitrogens, our sulfurs, root exudates, amino acids. We come down here, our, our phosphate is our fats and oils, our surplus energy, omega-3s, omega-6s, all this kind of cool stuff. Now let's go into plant secondary metabolites, okay? Because this is what makes or breaks the plant. This is what makes or break nutrition. And have we got some of the plant nutrient charts? the plant uptake charts that we can just show these guys is when a plant grows it has to have nutrition on a certain schedule and so if a guy is going to produce yield and nutrition plants are already programmed that they have to have certain nutrients at certain times this isn't a random thing, like well, the plant will wait, the plant won't wait. It, once it germinates, it's on a biological clock. And, and it's got to have nutrition as it grows. If we miss these nutritional curves, then our plant simply cuts back yield and quality. And so every plant has a personality and it has a specific diet of so much when at every growth stage okay and when I have time I can go through and research the development of a chick inside the egg and out there somewhere if I spend enough time I can find the development of a chick and the mineral content when in those 21 days it needs this 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 and this and what it's forming and what it's going to end up being Everything works off the same principle. It doesn't matter if it's an egg or a plant or a human. Okay, we all get put together. And it's the minerals that have to be there at a certain time to make all this work. So, what do plant secondary metabolites do? Well, they do all kinds of wonderful things, but we're just gonna jump into it right now. Okay, Paul, can you read this from the back? This is just a summary. Oh. Okay. I didn't <laughs> think so. I'm not Superman. <laughs> oh, I can't read it from here. So we're going to break it down. You're about 30 years older, that's why. It is true. <laughs> okay. So this is just a very brief summary of the plant secondary metabolites. And this is, you're familiar with some of these. Okay. Alkaloids, terpenoids, phenolics sulfonated amino acids. So let's look at alkaloids. Caffeine. Any of you guys had caffeine yet today? Okay. Caffeine is an alkaloid. Nicotine, morphine, cocaine. Where's that stuff? <laughs> Where's that stuff? <laughs> it's probably out in the building and just around the corner. So, uh, here. plants make this stuff, okay? Terpenes, essential oils. You guys used any of those? Okay, your wives probably weigh into it more than us, all right? Our carotenoids, egg, your egg coloring, your egg yolks, butter fat, lard, gets its coloring from your terpenoids. So if you guys don't have Enough darkness in your yolks, guess where the problem is? Right here. Your plant is not putting together enough terpenes. Okay? Now let's look at these guys. My phenolics. I've got flavonoids and non-flavonoids. Right here. This is your antioxidant. Oxygen reactive absorption capacity. This is what keeps me alive, all right? This is a good thing. When you see plants with red, blue, and purples in them, 
they're loaded with this stuff, these flavonoids. Non-flavonoids, have you guys ever taken aspirin before? Cornish, you've never had an aspirin in your life? They're not strong enough. Yeah. <laughs> Plants, salicylic acid is aspirin. But this aspirin here will not destroy your kidneys and it will not destroy your liver. Okay? Plants don't do that. Cruciferous vegetables. Did anybody have any broccoli for lunch? Broccoli is a cruciferous. Anti-cancer, liver detoxifier, anti, okay, then we get into our alliums, antibacterial, antifungal, anti-disease. All right, we keep going. Let's just look at our essential oils. This is one group of the terpenes. This is one small group of the terpenes. All right, when we get into essential oils, we have hydrocarbons. There's a monoterpenes. I have a thousand different types of these. My sesquiterpenes, I have over 7,000 of these. Diterpenes, more than 3,000. Sesquiterpenes, tri triterpenes, tetraterpenes, on down. So far, just in the terpenes, terpenoids down here, they've identified more than 22,000 different kinds. Now, when God put all this together, do you think this was the junkyard? Or do you think there's a reason for this? God said... Everything he did had a purpose. Had a purpose. It still does. Then you take these 22,000 different compounds, and we're still discovering new ones. We're not to the end of the rope. There's between 300 and 800 different constituents in each compound. So you start doing the math, and I'm somewhere between just a touch shy of 7 million to over 16 million constituents. Now, I'm only in one part of one of the four. Plant secondary metabolites. Okay? So, no one can tell me that a plant isn't brilliant. What is happening is we don't know how to get the fuel to them to activate them to produce this stuff. Okay? So I look here at my essential oils. I've got oxygenated compounds. Calming, relaxing, antifungal, anti-infectious, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, cell reformation, tissue, stops asthma, colds, flus, coughs, respiratory. Okay? Cornelius, you're not getting enough oxygenated compounds through your t ketone groups. Well, these are, those are probiotics. This is plants. Cornelius, this is plants. Okay? Essential oils, the other group, oxygenated compounds continue, alcohols, diuretics, phenols. These are the most powerful antioxidants, antibacterial type things. Stimulate our nerves, our immune systems down here, respiratory systems. Plants are designed to make all this amazing stuff. They keep us healthy, they keep our birds healthy. Okay, our monoterpenes, guess what this is? Apinine, B-pinene. Inhibits bone resorption. Anybody heard of osteoporosis? Okay, that's when you demineralize your bones. Okay? So can you get it back if a guy's got it? You can remineralize your bones. So how do you do that? You get it through plants. You get it through your terpenes. They'll rebuild your bone structure with minerals. If, if we have the components, the body is designed to rebuild intelligently those systems. So do you have anything for muscle rebuild? Uh, Exercise. <laughs> no. Well, you, you, you've got to have components that sustain your muscle intelligence. You can put muscle back on simply by exercising, but if you're missing something that governs its intelligence, then your muscles are still going to hurt. Just having muscle doesn't fix muscle. No. You've, got, you've got an intellectual side and a physical side of everything. It's just like our brain. We have a, we got three pounds of brain, and we have this incredible intellectual capacity that, that drives it and runs it. But let's just look at these here for a minute. I, I'm sure there's an answer to that, but I'm not, I'm not the guy that's researched that yet. Okay? Right here, 
cholesterol reducer, can cancer preventative, cholesterol suppressant, okay, camphene, myrosine, largest selling group of drugs in the world are statin drugs, suppressing cholesterol. All right, so do we really want our cholesterol suppressed chemically? What are you guessing? Mike says no. Emil? No. Okay. Cholesterol happens to be the base of all of your hormones. It happens to also be the base of the biggest part of your brain food. Your brain consumes most of your cholesterol. And if you prefer Alzheimer's, I would say you start with statin drugs. Because your body produces almost all the cholesterol. Your diet only contributes to cholesterol if you need it. I thought the eggs did that. They do produce cholesterol. However, your body won't use it if it doesn't need it. Your body's going to produce the cholesterol that okay, it needs. Okay, when we go back, okay. plants produce all these fats, right? We got omega-3s, omega-6s, omega-9s. Okay, these are our essential fatty acids that we have. And what happens in the formation of our cholesterol is we get too much of one versus another one. It's not that omega-6s and omega-9s are bad. It's just that when you have one omega-3 and 25 omega-6s, you are going to screw up your system. And that's what these bad cholesterols come from is this huge imbalance in our fats. Okay, our body needs threes, sixes, and nines, but they need them in the right balance. So plants make these. Now when I extract all of my vegetable oil, and I cook all my french fries, and my hush puppies, and my fish and chips, and I deep fry everything in nothing but omega-6s, and I eat that, and I don't eat any fish, to get my omega-3s. I don't eat the plants with the omega-3s. And I overload my system with omega-6s, then I do cellular damage. And it's those compounds that then begin to affect. I get two bad levels of LDL cholesterol and not HDL cholesterol, which is a good cholesterol. I just, we have to look at ourselves as this chemical reactor. When we put stuff in, things are gonna happen. We have the choice to eat what we want. We do not have the choice of the consequences. Okay, that's already programmed into us. And so the wonderful thing is, is, is knowing what plants can and can't do and how to eat plant material. So every disease or every ailment you can trace back to a nutritional problem and to a lack of minerals that's operating a system that provides that intelligence or that instruction for that particular area of the body. So when we look at this, okay, I've got cholesterol suppressant. Now, when a plant does something, there are no side effects. Okay, when it suppresses cholesterol, I'm not going to ruin 12 other organs. If I buy a statin drug, I am going to ruin 12 other organs. Okay, because you will never fix a biological problem with a chemical. And not in this world, we're not designed that way. You can force a gene to do something, but you don't fix the problem. The other thing is, is when a plant makes a compound, it puts lots of things with it to buffer and activate and support that function. Pharmaceuticals do not. They go in, force the function, and there's no buffering, there's no support. It's just, I'm gonna push my way through a bowl in a china shop, and I'm gonna go from one end to the other one, and there's lots of broken dishes in the middle. And that's what pharmaceutical drugs do. Okay, they'll force a reaction, but you read the label, and how many side effects do you have? One action, dozens and dozens and dozens of side effects. Because it's not put together the way 
biological systems function. We go through here, antimicrobial, antifungal, valerian, this is our tranquilizer. Uh, this right here improves arthritic areas, circulation. So some of your monoterpenes that should be in plants, Paul, should help the muscle and the leg problems and the pain, okay? All these plants contain all of these amazing compounds. The reason I put this together was to show you what plants are capable of doing. This one here, pesticide and mite control, okay? This one is active agent candida, albium. That is a very, very nasty organism that produces lots of toxins to people who eat a lot of sugar, okay? Attacks predatory insects. Plants use these as their defense, all right? Antifungal activates human, oh, granulite, that word, okay? Granulocytis. Yep. I knew what that was at one time, I forgot out. This is your smooth muscle cells. This is how they're formed, okay? You've got abscisic, abscisic acid right here. This is one of your five plant growth regulators, okay? Stimulates insulin release, Okay, regulate stomata control in plants. All of these things are happening with these compounds. And it, again, you know, we're looking at a couple compounds, but it, within these groups I have thousands of these. 1,000, 3,000, 7,000. So you could go on endlessly, potent antibiotic, antifungal, anti, do we get down in here to anti-AIDS, antimicrobial, anti-nematode. We go down, we have lots of things that go into our vitamin production, plant growth regulation production, our gibrillion, anti-cancer. And the more we see this, we look at this,